Hi, my name is Ben Owens. In this video, we're going to look at measurements that use a logarithmic scale. Many types of measurement use what's called a logarithmic scale. Some examples of these are the Richter scale, which measures the intensity of earthquakes, decibels, which measure the intensity of sound or the loudness of sound, the pH of solutions, which measures how acidic or basic something is, and then light intensity. In this presentation, we're going to explore why this type of scale is useful and see many real-world examples where logar the logarithmic scale is used. So why do we use a logarithmic scale? Logarithmic functions have certain qualities that make them very useful for measuring things. In this graph, we can see the graph of log of x, or log base 10 of x. As you notice, this graph um, sort of has a vertical asymptote at the y-axis, and then it simply grows as it goes out towards infinity. Now, if we zoom out, we can see something very interesting about this function. The log function is always increasing, but it's increasing very slowly. In fact, since the logarithm is the inverse of an exponential function, the logarithmic function grows as slowly as an exponential function grows quickly. So for f of x is equal to log base 10 of x, in order to move one step up, you have to multiply your x value by 10. In other words, um, f of 10 is equal to 1. In order to get to 2, that is to take one step up on your y-axis, that's not going to happen until you get to 100. And then to move up to 3, that's not going to happen until you get to 1,000, and so on and so forth. So, this shows us a fact about log functions. The logarithmic functions grow very slowly. And for this reason, when you're measuring values that are extremely big, a logarithmic scale is very useful. Let's look at this example. The Richter scale is used to measure the magnitude or the strength of earthquakes. When an earthquake occurs, a seismometer is used to measure the movement of the ground. The magnitude of the earthquake is made by comparing the ratio of the measurement taken during the earthquake, the amplitude of that, compared to the amplitude during a very sort of inactive time, or when there's no earthquake. The problem is that when an earthquake occurs, the amplitude measure on the seismometer is way bigger than that minor amplitude that's being used for comparison. In fact, it can be up to 100 million times bigger or more. So although it might be more dramatic to say that an earthquake measured 9,575,000, having to deal with numbers so big would be somewhat annoying and even possibly confusing. So we use a logarithmic scale. Using a logarithmic scale takes those enormous numbers and makes them more manageable. The magnitude of an earthquake is measured by using the formula log base 10 of i over i naught, where this i naught value is the magnitude of that small um, amount that we use for comparison. So what would the Richter scale rating be for an earthquake that was measured at 10 million times i naught? So using this formula, we get the log base 10 of 10 million times i naught divided by i naught. In this case, since there's an i naught on the top and an i naught on the bottom, they will simply cancel. And so we're left with the log base 10 of 10 million, and that's equal to 7. So we would say that this earthquake has a magnitude 7. So what would be the magnitude of an earthquake measuring 100 million times i naught? Notice that this earthquake is 10 times stronger than the one in the previous example. Doing our calculation, we could see that this earthquake measures with a magnitude of 8. 
So an earthquake that measures 10 times bigger will only be one step higher on the Richter scale. This is something that you have to be careful of when you're dealing with logarithmic scales. An example of this would be that an earthquake of magnitude 7 is a hundred times stronger than magnitude 5. In other words, anytime you take one step on the scale, you have to multiply by 10. So taking two steps, say from 5 to 7, you would have to multiply by 10 times 10, which is 100. If you took three steps, you would have to multiply by 1,000. So one advantage of using a logarithmic scale is that it takes big numbers that you wouldn't want to have to write all the time and assigns them to much smaller ones. In fact, you can almost always design a scale that will only use one-digit numbers. Frankly, it just makes it easier to talk about. To say that uh, an earthquake had a magnitude 7 or a magnitude 8 is much easier than saying it had a magnitude, you know, 3 million and 57 or, or whatever. Now, just like logarithmic functions can turn huge numbers into one-digit values, a logarithmic function will also turn extremely small numbers into one-digit numbers. Try plugging this into your calculator. The log of 0 0.00000001. This, of course, is a very small number. When you plug that into your calculator, you're simply going to get the value negative 7. So we can see that a logarithm is going to change a really small number into um, just a one-digit number. One example of this is using the pH. In chemistry, we use the pH scale to measure the acidity or basicity of a solution, how basic something is. The scale ranges from 1 to 14, and the further to the left you are, the more acidic, and the further to the right you are, the more basic. 7, right in the middle, is pH neutral. So what does the pH actually measure? Well, the pH of a solution measures the concentration of hydronium ions, which is H3O positive, in the solution. The problem is, in solutions, this concentration is very small. So we're going to be dealing with very small numbers, and we want to try to make a good scale for those. Here are some examples of common items along with their approximate concentration of H3O positive. In lemon juice, the H3O positive concentration is 0.01. In wine, it's 0 0.0001. In rain, it gets even smaller. And just moving down, you can see, by the time you get to bleach, this is a very, very small number. Frankly, we simply don't want to have to write numbers like that. It's much easier to say that bleach has a pH of 12.5. It makes the numbers easier to talk about and, frankly, easier to work with. I think that everyone would agree that saying something has a pH of 12 is easier, easier than saying something has a concentration of hydronium ions of 0 0.00000000001. It just is easier to say. The formula for the pH of a solution is the pH is equal to the negative log of the concentration of a hydronium ions. The negative log is often used when the values being measured are extremely small. So let's look at this example. What is the pH of a product whose concentration of hydronium ions is 5.5 times, times 10 to the negative 5? First, note that the concentration here is written in scientific notation. So what we need to do is write this first as a decimal. 5.5 times 10 to the negative fifth, in order to write that as a decimal, we need to look at this number, and that tells us how many times we need to move our decimal place to the left. In other words, this being a negative tells us that we're going to be moving our decimal place to the left. So we're going to move this 
five times to the left, and that's where we put our decimal. In all the spaces in between, we have to fill those in with zeros. So 5.5 times 10 to the negative fifth is equal to 0 0.000055. Now, plugging this number into our formula, we get that the pH is equal to the negative log of 0 0.000055, which is equal to 4.2596. So we would say that this product has a pH of around 4.3. In summary, logarithmic scales are used in many different fields across science. They are especially useful when the quantities that are being measured are extremely large or extremely small. You have to be careful because an increase of one unit on a logarithmic scale means the quantity being measured has been multiplied by the base of the log being used. And finally, logarithmic scales are not linear. I hope this video is helpful in understanding a logarithmic scale. Thanks for watching.